Hi, I'm Antonio Mora. It's time to have a talk about socialism. In a recent Twitter exchange I had, a Bernie Sanders supporter defended the Vermont senator, arguing he was not a socialist, insisting he was a social democrat. That's just one example of a trend that seems to be growing as Bernie surges in the polls. It goes something like this. He's not really a socialist, he's just a social justice warrior, a Scandinavian type socialist, or some sort of reincarnation of FDR who wants a new New Deal. Hogwash. If Sanders talks like a socialist, acts like a socialist, has policies that are socialist, and tells you he's a socialist, why in the world would anyone even suggest he's not a socialist? It's easy to be confused because Sanders often resorts to platitudes about creating an economy that works for all, not just the wealthy, and that billionaires need to pay their fair share. Who would be against that? The problem is that he constantly skirts specifics. Let's break it down. First, he's not a social democrat. Social democracy calls for practical measures that promote social justice within a capitalist economy. Sanders' policies are well to the left of European social democrats, even those of Jeremy Corbyn and the UK's Labour Party, which just suffered a serious drubbing at the polls. And Bernie could call himself a social democrat, but chooses not to. Second, Bernie has embraced the legacy of the New Deal, prompting some leftist commentators to describe him as a welfareist who doesn't fully reject capitalism. But his advocacy for everything from socialized medicine to the Green New Deal, and especially early in his career for the nationalization of utilities, banks, and major industries, is in a different world than FDR's social programs or LBJ's Great Society. Other Sanderistas, an appropriate moniker for supporters of a candidate who vocally favored the brutal Sandinistas in Nicaragua, prefer to argue that what Sanders proposes is transplanting what they see as utopian Scandinavian socialism to the U.S. One small problem. Scandinavian socialism is a myth. The Nordic countries have among the freest economies in the world. They are capitalist systems that simply have high taxes on individual income and high sales taxes that allow for more expansive welfare benefits. Corporate tax rates are actually lower than in the U.S. Knowing that electing a socialist might still be a tall order in the U.S., some commentators dishonestly defend Sanders, saying, as the New York Times' Paul Krugman wrote in a recent column, that Sanders, quote, has expressed admiration not for Venezuela, but for Denmark. Sanders has praised Denmark, but he has extensively praised Venezuela, Nicaragua, and even the Soviet Union when it was still around. Less than a year ago, he avoided calling Nicolás Maduro a dictator. So, in the absence of further clarity from Sanders himself, what do his fellow democratic socialists in the U.S. want? Sanders is not an official member of the Democratic Socialists of America organization, but two of his most high-profile endorsers, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Rashida Tlaib, are. The group encompasses a wide variety of leftist philosophies, but ending capitalism and instituting socialism are clear long-term goals. Not just greater equality, but fully realizing socialism. The DSA has expressed solidarity with Venezuela's socialist dictatorship, boycotted Israel, and even severed relations with the Socialist International because it wasn't socialist enough. A new poll this month shows why Sanderistas are trying to whitewash the socialism angle. The NPR PBS NewsHour Marist poll showed only 28% of adults have a favorable view of socialism. That support drops the older a voter gets. Only 20% of people over 55 see socialism favorably, and they vote in far greater numbers than younger Americans. A new NBC Wall Street Journal poll found 67% of registered voters had reservations or were very uncomfortable with a socialist candidate. Earlier polls had indicated more Americans are embracing socialism than in the past, with a Gallup survey last year showing 47% would consider voting for a socialist. However, Gallup acknowledged serious confusion over what socialism actually was, with one in four Americans equating it with social equality. Only 17% understood it by its classical definition, characterized by centrally planned economies with collective or government ownership of the means of production and distribution. Even so, no age group in the NPR survey viewed socialism more favorably than capitalism. It is more popular among millennials and members of Gen Z, those between 18 and 38, than any other group, but only 38% of them had a favorable view of socialism, 
compared to 54% who viewed capitalism favorably. That doesn't mean they won't vote for Sanders, especially the socialism light version of him. Younger Americans have grown up with increasing income and wealth inequality in the shadow of the Great Recession, and until recently with many years of high unemployment, stagnant wages, high student debt, and a real fear that they will not benefit from the entitlements that retirees enjoy today. Many of them want a more socially equal and bigger welfare state. But do they want a less free economy dominated from Washington, D.C. by the federal government? Do they want whole industries nationalized? Do they want real socialism, the transfer of capital out of private hands so that the state controls those means of production and distribution? For that matter, is that what the democratic socialist Sanders wants himself? Voters deserve answers. And in a general election, the opposition and even the media, which has been very gentle in pushing for specifics so far, will demand them.